Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio and today I'm sharing with you my Pick a Stick Challenge Artist Trading Card Challenge for the August 2019 month. Pick a Stick Challenge is a challenge offered by Peg Robinson and myself in a Facebook group art community which is based on randomly drawn one word prompts. So that little printout that you see is my challenge prompts and I'm going to make some artist trading cards with it. So prompt number one for this month was dip and I thought about some different ways I could dip something my card into something or dip dip something into something else. Of course I've got two other challenges out there that you can watch the videos to see how I used that prompt if it's even on there. <laughs> I know it is on the page, but I'm not sure about the tag. But anyway, I decided that I would get some pattern on my artist trading cards. And I had started out with this um, one that's painted with black gesso because I thought it would be fun to start with a dark background. And the color for this month's challenge is, is uh, green gold. And I had this metallic paint. I thought it would look really cool on the black. Then I ended up doing two a black one and one on manila cardstock. An artist trading card is three and a half inches by two and a half inches, the size of a baseball card or Yu-Gi-Oh card or Pokemon card. It's a, a trading card that artists use. <clears throat> so I put some of that acrylic paint through a stencil from Stencil Girl. This is one that's called ATC Mix-Up and they have a lot of them that are ATC sized. And then I just simply dipped my card into it. I used a Teflon pad so that the cleanup would be easy, scraped off the paint, excess paint so that I could use it in collage later so I wouldn't waste anything. Then I heated it to dry it, which is maybe a little bit of a cheat, but that's what I did. I heated it to dry it. So um, that's prompt number two. Now prompt number three was fish. I'm tired of fish. I've been doing fish all month fishes everywhere so I decided to instead use the wild card which is smear. The wild card prompt is drawn as well randomly but it's it's there so that you can replace something you don't want to use so that's exactly what I did. I got out some pastels these are chalk and I was wanting to see what they would look like. Um, oftentimes when you use this type of product you can use uh, like a tortillion or something to smear it. I decided to just use my hands and before I did that I put on some barrier lotion because I'm learning lately that a lot of the pigments in things are toxic so it's a good idea to protect your hands with some type of a art guard type lotion or cream or glove. I don't always do that. Um, I get right in there and get my hands into stuff, but I guess that's not a good idea. <laughs> Didn't know, really know that. Um, so I'm just putting the, the uh, pastel chalk on and then smearing it with my finger and just kind of filling in the areas in between the, the, the pattern just to add some more color to my cards. And so at this point, I've used all my prompts. I thought I thought about um, metallicing up some of that pastel with this this uh, glitter pen, clear glitter pen. But all it did was just remove the pastel. So decided not to use that after all. That's a Spectrum Noir uh, clear glitter pen. I decided instead to do some collage, which is not surprising if anybody who <laughs> watches my videos, you know, that's my favorite thing to do. This little um, scrap bin sits on my desk to the right of me and I just put tiny scraps in there. Then I have a larger bin of scraps that sits under my desk. Occasionally I go through these, sort them into color bins so that they're sorted by color for easier use. But these are the ones I haven't sorted yet. So I'm just looking for some interesting papers, interesting scraps that fit in with my color scheme. And I decided since I had that kind of draping, um, looping, um, not really looping, but you know what I mean, the uh, scallop type of a look, I would cut some of my papers in that same type of shape and keep with very rounded, um, shapes instead of straight shapes. So I am using my scissors for some of this and then 
in other cases I'm tearing. Um, I like the the variation and contrast between a, a cut edge and a torn edge. Sometimes I do all torn, sometimes I do all cut. You know, it just depends on what I'm feeling like. Uh, this morning I just felt like mixing. So I found some different scraps. I did some cutting, tearing, and laid them out into a pattern. And then I'm just going to glue them down. So I've got some Liquitex Matte Gel Medium that I'm going to use. And I'm, I'm using it carefully. I'm mostly putting on the glue, if you want to call it that. It really is just glue. <laughs> um, on my scrap piece of paper and onto the backs. And then just kind of pressing them down. Trying not to disturb that uh, pastel chalk. Because it will move and get removed if I rub over it a lot with my brush. If you really want to use pastels, you should probably put a fixative on there and maybe perhaps I'll take these outside later and spray them, you know, just give them a quick spritz with um, a sealer, a sealing varnish so that that pastel doesn't ever move or get rubbed off if I mail these to somebody, you know, put them in the envelope over the process of them being mailed, they could that that stuff could get rubbed off. So that's what I'll probably do later is uh, put some probably some satin because there is a sheen to these. At the beginning, I showed a little boomerang video where I was, you know, moving them back and forth so that you can see that they're shiny. That uh, green gold paint that I used is a metallic. And then I also used um, some other metallic on the black one. I used some gold metallic as well. So you can see that they're uh, shiny or shimmery. I don't want to take that away by putting a matte sealant on there. So I'll use a satin or a gloss. Although I'm not even sure I have gloss. I'm not a big fan of gloss. I might have something though. And I'll, it will be an aerosol. Generally I seal my, my project with aerosol sealer. I do know that that choice is sucky for the environment and I should use uh, something that I could put on with a brush. But in some cases like this, if I put a brush varnish over it, I again would probably uh, move that pastel and that wouldn't be good. So in, in a few cases I use the aerosols, which are just really so much more easy <laughs> to just spray it on there and let it dry in the sun. It's good enough for me. So I'm just about done. I've added another little kind of yellow smaller piece. I've was thinking about this spiral. I love spirals and I was thinking about adding that, but I ended up not adding it. And just, you know, maybe adding a little piece here and there, um, really keeping with that green gold theme, but adding in some other colors that are complementary or contrasting in some cases, which makes it more interesting. And yeah. So recently I was at the beach and I was moving my son to California for his doctoral program and he's moving to Santa Cruz, California. So of course we went to the beach and walked around in the sand and listened to the waves and they have beautiful sunrises there because of the fog. Like sometimes there's just, it's foggy and it looks so gorgeous when the sun is rising and colorful. So these cards kind of represent that. That's what I was thinking about when I was making them, if you want to know what was inside my head. And um, when the sun rises every day, you're alive. <laughs> and you're hopeful that the day is going to be great that day and everything is going to go wonderful. So the sentiment that I put on these is hope. And on the lighter one, I put dark. And on the darker one, I put light. It's, they were from the Tim Holtz, um, I think they're maybe called Big Chat stickers. Of course, all the products I use are listed in the description box below, and those link to my Amazon affiliates uh, store, so that helps me out if you use that link to pr make your purchases. I don't care if you purchase what I used. If you make any purchases <laughs> using those links, it's very helpful to me. So now everything is dry and I'm thinking that I need to add maybe some pen work or something for a contrast because 
well, especially on the lighter colored one on the vanilla cardstock, there's a lot of same tone um, colors there and there's not a lot of contrast. So I went around the edges with my black ink pad to give a border around the edge. And then I'm using on this one, a Fabric Castell Pit Pen, which is artist um, India ink pen from Fabric Castell. And I just drew along all the lines and made kind of illustration lines. And then I added some highlights with my white Posca pen. And I wanted to make the other one a little bit different, a little bit more freeform. So I did something different on it. Here I am putting the stickers on, I guess. <laughs> Got ahead of myself a little bit there. So there's the dark background with the light word, hope. And um, that one's pretty much, I'm, I'm happy with them. I'm finished with it. I put some splatters on there to make it a little bit more interesting. So now I'm moving to the darker background one. And I add some gold metallic paint to the circular shape that um, it was it was yellow paper and it was just too light. I needed it to be a little bit more impactful on the design. So that gold metallic helps. And then I'm using my Stabilo All Pencil and my water brush to make a lot more painterly and um, kind of blended or faded lines around things rather than the real sharp look that the the lighter one has. And it just it gives it a different look. I prefer the dark one myself, um, but someone else might like the light one better. I don't know. You let me go and let me know in the comments below <laughs> what you think is the better one. Um, I also added highlights with my white Posca pen, but also blending out the highlight with the water brush. So it gives it a different look. It's not as hard. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and are interested in pick a stick challenge and and how I do these things with these randomly drawn prompts. Of course, there's other people's videos and pictures out there in the group and on YouTube that you can look and see how they use the same prompts and come out with something completely different. If you did like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, you can share this on Pinterest or on Facebook if you think someone else might be interested in watching this video about artist trading cards done with randomly drawn prompts. So the last thing I did was to add some splatter. And on the darker one, I added bright orange a splatter with a Posca pen. And then I added in some, some of a pink color that coordinates with the pastel in the background that is a chalk pin that, that I recently received. In fact, it hadn't even been charged up yet, but it goes better with the background. So I added a little bit of it to my pink scallops as well. So those are pretty much finished. I just add the word and then that is it for me for this video. Thanks for watching. Here comes your close-ups. Bye-bye.